Prop cars are righteously awful. Bad stuff happened to defiance. Was canceled by the network that is fiction mixed with science. Tires acting with their own minds. Show cars tend to be a mess no matter what the show's like. This is a 2013 Dodge Charger V6 made to look like a Mad Max style post apocalyptic rampage sedan, and it is one of the worst driving cars I ever tried to point down a road. It doesn't track straight. The ride gave me hemorrhoids, half of the interior amenities don't work, the steering feels like rotating a frisbee in a plate of mashed potatoes, I can't see the instruments, and the wheels rub. Oh, and all the tires are in business for themselves. Prop cars are made to look good on screen. They're not made to be cars. A stock Subaru Forester has more off-road capability than this whatever this is. Roman has some notes on the show Defiance and the associated video game, and we're going to get to those when he's ready, but this is the car from Defiance. This is the sheriff, I don't know what. I didn't watch the show, he did, he'll figure it out. Chrysler Corporation is really flinging their cars out. And by that, I mean, we know they're having problems, so maybe from a marketing standpoint, they're going to go, everybody have a car and we, we remain relevant by virtue of ferocious marketing. Any sort of video game or movie or something, Dodge has its fingers in it somewhere. To make this suburban emasculation machine look like it's ready for war, the producers commission car builders to leave in the spring pucks. Now, I may be describing those things wrong, but when a car comes off that car ha hauler, you know, the, the big thing that holds about six cars and it rolls into the dealership, every single one of those cars has higher ride height than it's meant to, and the way they do that is to have rubber pucks that get just shoved into the springs. It keeps the springs from completely collapsing, and it increases the ride height. It's, it's the opposite of cutting springs. And the reason they do that is so when you back it off the truck, you're not going to scrape the bumpers or anything. You get it an extra four inches of ground clearance that way. Well, they left those things in this so they could hold jack the car up and fit fit these Mickey Thompson mud tires onto it. And you'd think, oh, well, you now you have more ground clearance. You don't, all right? Because right away, the wheels completely fill the wheel well. It looks bitchin', but the second you hit a bump, because your spring rates haven't changed and your dampening hasn't changed, so you hit the slightest bump in this car and the, the, the Mickey Thompsons just tear into the plastic splash guard of the wheel well. And there's another reason you don't turn sedans into off-road cars is because the wheelbase is far too long. Look, we tried to get this onto the abandoned section of Route 61 up here in Centralia and it didn't work. The car just kept high centering. A stock G Jeep TJ, well, with its short wheelbase, would just go womp, 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 womp. When cars are prepped for movies or television, most accessories are removed, and windshield wipers, control stalks are unplugged, turn signal switches are snipped, radio head unit wires are yanked. The idea is that actors, while driving the car, can gesture and use the space within the car without, oops, hitting the horn or hitting the wipers or anything and ruining a otherwise perfectly good take. So you got to reconnect all all those things. Now, in order to make this Dodge look like it lasted 47 years or something like that, they, they took a random orbital sander and just went all over the entire dash and the seats and everything like that, so you can't see the gauges. Mm. And then, oh, you see these side pipes coming out the side? Oh, they're fake. And look how the whole body looks distressed. This is all one big wrap. It's a perfectly clean car underneath. I have no idea what this thing on the hood is supposed to be. In the future, uh, cars run on reactor fuel and technobabble and whatever this is in front of you obstructs your vision. It's like the Knight Rider car. It's hard to go. It, it, this car, oh, this is even worse than the Knight Rider car. The Knight Rider car went, the kit went straight just fine, but it had trouble turning. This car can't turn and it can't go straight. And the guys who bought this from the show, they bought it from the prop department. They were on a road trip from Toronto down into Pennsylvania, and then they drove this thing all the way to LA like this. <sighs> Okay, so Mr. Regular asked me to talk TV this week. Now, a lot of people know this, but some don't, but my side job actually involves watching and writing about TV for an entertainment blog. Hell, I have a quote on the back of The Walking Dead Season 5 DVD. True story. 
And yeah, it's a humble brag, but seriously, it's there. All this is a way of saying I probably would have never even heard of Defiance if I hadn't been busy reporting on TV shows because I'm a cord cutter, so if I wanted to watch something on cable, I'd have to go out of my way to find it. Now, Defiance was cancelled a year ago last month, and although it was primarily a TV show, I mostly remember it for the game, which featured an uncomfortable amount of online ads that all use Radioactive by Imagine Dragons, but without even having the courtesy to put Alexandra Daddario in it like the music video did. But considering that the setting had to do with exploding alien terraforming technology ripping the earth a fresh new asshole, I suppose the song choice was apt. So, way the hell back in June 2011, it was a different time. Anthony Weiner was making headlines. People argued for and against stricter gun laws. John Jones was causing ruckus in MMA. And Dolph Ziggler was a mid-card champion in WWE. Oh, okay, so maybe it wasn't all that different. But this was also the same month that Sci-Fi announced they would be creating a television series with a video game tie-in. Actors were cast, alien languages were created with the help of a professional linguist, and an entire universe was pretty much created from the ground up. The story centered around a man and his adopted alien daughter in the city-state of Defiance, where humans and alien races live together in the ruins of St. Louis, with its five-alarm dumpster fires of interspecies tension and cratered roads that give the sensation of driving on an oatmeal raisin cookie. For a show like Defiance, you could kind of see how a car like this might be necessary. But a lot like general opinions on the Charger over the years, the show started out with solid ratings, but became a bit more divided in subsequent seasons. By the end, it was averaging around a million viewers, which wasn't a great number when you consider how much a show like that had to cost. Hell, Defiance was sci-fi's most watched drama the year they axed it, but they couldn't justify bringing it back for the audience it was pulling. And I can't imagine there was any way they could have done a show like this justice on a reduced budget. Granted, they probably could have tried at least, give it a season on the discount, but the third season ended in a way that would have made it odd to come back from, and besides, by this point, sci-fi pretty much decided to nuke everything from orbit and start over, with shows like Dominion, Haven, Lost Girl, and Continuum all coming to an end, and getting replaced by stuff like Killjoys, Dark Matter, and Twelve Monkeys. Sci-fi is in the Canadian import business, bringing in shows from the Great White North on the cheap, so you don't really need shows like Dark Matter and Killjoys to be massive hits to be worth the investment, and the same was true for Lost Girl and Continuum. So Defiance got the axe, and fans were pretty torn up about it. On the what a shame scale, it fell somewhere between an eggless carbonara and a guy ignoring his doctor's cholesterol advice and loading up his plate with hot brown at Shady Maple. The video game somehow had an even more divisive reception. It wasn't necessarily that it was bad, it was just kind of generic. While plenty of reviewers had nice things to say about the mechanics, others were kind of worn out on MMO-style games and hated the grind of it, the way you instinctively hate whatever song was playing during your first car accident, or the first time you were pulled over. The game just didn't impart that same sense of uniqueness that the series did. It felt more common than this arbitrary list I made up about the five most common female middle names. For reference, it's Lynn, Elizabeth, Anne, Marie, and Louise. Go ahead, show this video to your girlfriend, and maybe you'll hear her curse under her breath because her name is on the list. Ultimately, Defiance had a dedicated fan base. I mean, it still does. It had people willing to fight for its right to stick around, and that's a lot more than you can say for other shows and games in this genre. I guess what I'm saying is that Defiance was worth being taken more seriously than it was, and in today's car culture, you can make the same argument for the Charger. This isn't just about guys named John chumming the water to find other bros to bro out with and form their own little john Taraj. and it's not about hopping on the dyno and keeping those wheels spinning like the top at the end of Inception. A Charger can be about more than all of that, especially when you consider how much they mean to the people who own them. Like TV shows, cars can get cancelled too, but if the Charger were ever discontinued, I imagine the outcry would encompass more than hashtags. Thank you, Roman. When we had this thing up in Centralia, folks loved it. The off-road guys were magnetically pulled to this idea of triumphant individualism because that's what post-apocalyptic movies are about. They're very much westerns. It's the idea of the individual triumphing over nature or some barbaric tribe. And the cars have become the horse, the faithful rugged steed. And that's what this represents because all of us, well, maybe it's a male thing or maybe it's an American thing. We love this romantic vision 
of us standing tall against a pile of evil in a wasteland. What is it about that? And even though this car is horrific to drive, and you also have to, you can get in the back seats of this car, but you have to pull some pins and take this fake roll cage. Oh yeah, this roll cage, it's welded directly to the body. Oh, and another thing, uh, these red lights facing forward, they're illegal. The little blue lights flashing around inside of that, whatever this reactor thing is, oh, that's illegal. I don't think the chicken wire inside the windows is illegal though. Anyway. This car is very good at doing one thing, representing individualistic survivability. It's representing an idea, and it's wonderful at staying put. Just don't drive it. Defiant sitting air on showtime. Otherwise, the seasons would have gone up to nine. The only way you'll have a safe day is if you never get inside this death trap disarray. This is the beginning where I find truth over the rocks.